Well, hello. Welcome to another short devotional. I do hope I can keep it short today because I'm so excited about this topic. Before I came, I worked out at the gym. See my ponytail? Yes, you have to get cool to work in the gym. Day one, just in case you're wondering. That's why you don't see much change. But I digress. I just want you to know I'm excited and I want to share my excitement with you today. We're going to talk about a subject that doesn't sound too exciting, but it is. Justice. Yes, justice. Many of you know I was gone for a few days. I was in uh, Orlando in that area. I was in Florida. Saw some beautiful warm days. Almost too warm for me. But there was one day when I stayed in the room while everyone else went on a trip. And it was that day, I believe it was a God-ordained day, because I got onto Facebook, which I hadn't done much of while I was gone, and I found a website that I had marked called Praying with Power. The gentleman who puts that up is Philip Watson. And Philip Watson, his whole purpose for this website is to help intercessors understand God and how to intercede. So it's a perfect website for me. Well... Let me tell you a little bit more about what we learned there and what I've learned since. Philip was talking about the fact that God's throne room is a place of justice. We know a lot of things about the Lord, but did we know how important justice is to God? Before we go on any further, let me tell you what the opposite of justice is. It's unfairness. Our lives are filled with unfair situations. Our lives are filled with with people who treat us unfairly, don't they? Our lives are filled with those we love who've, who've not been given a fair shake in life. So this really caught my attention. Let me read a few scriptures for you. Psalm, I'm going to start in Psalm 89 with verse 14. This one says, Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. God sits right there in justice and judgment. And we need to know he's a just and judged, a just God who judges. We need to know that. We hear so much about his love and his mercy, but we need to know that God wants justice in this world for himself, of course, but for us as well. Verse 15, I'll go on. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. I want to be there in his presence, don't you? In the name, in thy name shall they rejoice all the day. In thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength. And in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. Verse 18, for the Lord is our defense. The Holy One of Israel is our King. We need to know a little bit about this God, don't we? Psalm 97, 2. Clouds and darkness are around about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Here again, showing God. He's just. Proverbs 21, 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Think about this. Why is there so much injustice in this world? He said, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Verse 3, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. So we need to understand, God expects us to love one another, but if we're not being just, if we're not being fair, if those around us are not being treated that way, we're not pleasing God. You see, to do, it said, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. You know, the Lord's people always, we keep our minds focused. We should keep our minds focused on God's attributes. You know, he's a God of love. He's a God of order. He's faithful, isn't he? And we do receive tests from God in this world. And he wants to see if we have learned to be faithful, humble, And he says, his word counsels us. He says, my son, forget not my law. 
but let thine heart keep my commandments. This is something that so many people seem to forget. They want to say, God is love. He accepts me for the way I am. Well, there's truth to that. He does accept us. He also knows that our flesh is weak. But he is and will be and always will be a just God. A just God. And so we need to understand that when we are there and, you know, uh, before God's throne as intercessors, we can pray for justice. Yes, we can. Isaiah 59, 4. None calleth for justice. Here's what God's saying. This is a scripture as well as God is love. Isaiah 59, 4. None called for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity, speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. 59, 14. And judgment is turned away backward. Justice standeth afar off. God is telling us about the way the world is today. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Psalm 82, 3. Here is what God tells us to do. Don't think we are here to take care of ourselves only, or to think that this life is only for our pleasure. Although God has made this world, and we can have joy at his hand. We can have his mercy. We can have his forgiveness. But we need to know God is a just God. Psalm 82, 3 tells us what to do. He says, defend the poor and fatherless. Defend them. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Do justice. How do we do that? Psalm 89, 14, justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. So why am I talking about justice? During that prayer meeting that I was in, where they talked about the power, the power of prayer, that one I told you, praying with power, we prayed for justice justice and he showed us in this um, particular prayer meeting how we can pray God's justice we can stand before the Lord and declare justice in situations this has got me so excited when we see something that's going on in this world where there is not fairness where, where people are not being treated fairly we can say Lord I come to you today and I pray justice. I declare justice, your justice in this situation. The Bible tells us that God responds to our prayers, that God wants us to pray. You are not helpless when you pray. This is what got me so excited. So instead of laying down and just resting, I walked that hotel room and I began to pray. I felt so empowered. Because I realize this is God's word, this is God's will, and this is what we should do. Do not sit back thinking you are powerless, hoping that someday, somehow, people will change their treatment of others, the situations, perhaps that boss who is not seeing you, who is not paying you fairly, perhaps that one who is not treating his wife fairly, or I am trying to think of everything I can, you know, again, bosses, children, perhaps children not treating each other fairly. We could ask God to teach them, teach them how to be just, not unfair. So that's my devotional today. Know you have power as a child of God. Read his word, declare his word. That is how you can be sure you are doing the right thing, that you're not just making this up and just trying to be a boss to God. No, you are praying his word. You can say, God, you said judgment and judgment are the, your habitation. I come to you asking for your judgment and your justness in this situation. God loves it when we pray his word. Well, hope you've had a great day. Hope this devotional helps you. And I remain your friend, Lana D. I see the Lord And His train fills the temple I see the Lord 
you, Lord. With all my heart, my soul, and mind, I cry out to the God who created all things. And I bow my heart before you because you're holy and worthy and glorious and powerful. I honor you. I magnify you. I bow before you, Lord. I want everybody to help me one more time. Come on. And I cry. 